Okay, so we're going to continue on working with problems involving the normal uh, curve, and uh, and we will look at them in two different ways. We're going to look at it doing solving with a normal CDF in the stats at test Z test function or calculator. Each one has different um, has has a separate importance. The normal CDF is really nice because it's really good at you can solve problems where you're having to shade in between. So if you're looking for a distance between, normal CDF is gonna be the way you wanna go. However, you have to be able to show when you do these problems, regardless whether it's shading one direction or two directions, uh, you have to give the actual Z scores. It's not enough just to give the actual values, you're gonna to have to give the Z score. Unfortunately, the normal CDF doesn't, so you'll have to calculate it by hand. The stats test Z test, if I'm only shading one side or something like this, it will automatically give me the actual Z scores. I'm like, gosh, well, let's use that. Well, the problem is it doesn't do the type of problems where you're shading between. So stats test Z test or is great for upper tail or lower tail. Normal CDF is probably one of what you want to use for in between. So we're going to focus on uh, which one to use and when and how to do so. So our question is, using the actual values, calculate the probabilities for the following. A particular brand of light bulb is normally distributed. This is great. As soon as they tell me this, I can use the normal function of the calculator. We have a mean of 1,500 and a standard deviation of 75. All right, so mean of 1,500, standard deviation of 75. And they want to know what's the probability that it'll last less than 1,410. Well, every time I have a problem like this, I really like to go ahead and take a moment and draw the picture. It doesn't need to be beautiful, but these will that can help you get partial credit. It's not required, but it will help with partial credit. So there's my mean. My standard deviation, they tell me 75. And they want the probability that it's less than 1,410. So that I'm going to label that 1,410. And I'm shading to the left. And also remember, this goes to negative infinity. Well, if they tell me it's normally distributed, I like to go ahead and write down Z equals X minus mu over sigma, because that is an organizational tool for me. Let's me know what... Um, what I have, what I need, and what I'm looking to find. It's just a good way to look at that. All right. It says, what's the probability of the less than 4, 1,410? So I write my probability statement. And my probability statement is the probability that Z is less than, not Z, probability that X, excuse me, is less than 1,410. So that means that I'm looking for the probability and I'm gonna start plugging into my Z, the probability that Z is less than 1,410. My mean happened to be 1,500 and my standard deviation is 75. Okay, so in this case, we're only shading one way. Since we're only shading one way, we're probably gonna to wanna to do the stats test, Z test. So here we go. Stats, test, arrow twice over. And the very first thing that shows up is Z test. So that's what I'm going to choose. Press enter. Make sure stats is highlighted. Data is when we do L1, L2. If we have a list of data, we don't. We just have stats, statistics. So we're going to plug in. We have a mean of 1500, a standard deviation of 75. It says X bar, but we're only working with an X, so we're just gonna plug in the 1410. And as far as sample size, N is the sample size, what's the probability that the light bulb, so in other words, a single light bulb, so we have a sample of size one, and we shaded to the left, so we want the less than, so this is the less than. Always, whatever you have there is what you wanna copy here. And the nice thing about this is it gives me my Z score. So I need to write that down because the College Board absolutely requires it. So it's the probability that Z is less than negative 1.2. And that equals 
our probability is listed right here, uh, 0.115. And we need to go four decimal places. So 0 0.1150, all right? So that's the first one. And we did that one because we're shading one way. We use stats, test, Z test for that part, okay? All right, for part B, what is the probability the light bulb will last more than 1583? So this one is probability that it'll last more than 1583. So whenever, um, again, I draw that picture. So my picture in this case, our mean is still 1,500. We want more than 1583. More is gonna be shading up. And remember, this is gonna go to positive infinity. And they told us earlier that our standard deviation is 75. And Z equals X minus mu over sigma. My probability statement is this. I want the probability that X is greater than 1,583. I start plugging in and I have the probability that Z is greater than 1,000. 583 minus 1,500 over 75, because our mean is 1,500, standard deviation is 75. This is great work shown. And by the way, I could do this problem using the normal CDF or the stats test Z test, but since I'm shading in one direction, I'm gonna use the stats test Z test function. So stats test, and the very first thing that shows up is Z-test. Having a little trouble with my lighting. So stats test Z-test, press enter. Stats is highlighted. My mean was 1500. My standard deviation is 75. But we needed to be above 1583. And by the way, the diagram is not required, but it can help you get partial credit, but it's not required. And we shaded up. So we need a greater than, and notice that it matches right here. I have greater than. Calculate, and there we go. So we end up getting Z equals 1.1066. And you have to give that Z value. So the probability that Z is greater than 1.066, 1.1066. four decimal places, and that ends up equaling 0.1342. And that's my answer. This work is what is absolutely required to receive full credit, All right? So you need to get used to showing that work. All right, so that was where the Z test was actually better. But here we're looking for something that's in between. What's the probability the light bulb will last between 1563 and 1648? As far as drawing, this drawing is just as easy as the rest. So we want um, our drawing is like this. We have a mean of 1,500, a standard deviation of 75. We want 1563 and 1648. So we're looking for something in between. All right. So once again, we need a probability statement. Well, what are we looking for? We're looking for the probability that 1563 is less than X is less than 1648. The very fact that I have two values tells me I'm going to have to do a between. And when it's with working with the between, I'm going to go ahead and use the normal CDF. All right. I can use the Z test and we can look at that as we're working. So remember, it's Z equals X minus mu over sigma is our Z. And that's my organizational tool. So and I start with the larger value because that's the way we work mathematically. We're going to subtract this from that ultimately. So we're gonna do the probability that Z is less than 
48 minus our mean of 1,500 over the standard deviation of 75 minus the probability that Z is less than 1,563 minus 1,500 over standard deviation of 75. So that's what we want to show, okay? So I need to calculate these z-scores and I can go to the z-test and do it individually or however I want to. I'm gonna just go ahead and run it through the calculator and do it by hand. So 16.48 minus 1500 and then divide by 75. When I do that, I end up getting 1.973, all right? So 1.973, so that's the probability that Z is less than 1.973 minus the probability that Z is less than 1563 minus the 1500 <clears throat> divided by 75 is 0.84 minus the probability Z is less than 0.84. Notice we have um, two positive z scores, and that's because we're both we're above the mean. At this point, I have two z scores, and I can plug them into norm CDF. If I want to work with it between, I want to work with norm CDF, second bars, normal CDF, and I actually have a choice here. My lower bound 0.84. My upper bound was 1.973. And if I'm using a z-score, I'm always using zero and one. And I end up getting 0.1762. And that would be adequate work shown. I could have also gone and used the actual values and gone second bars, normal CDF, lower bound 1563, upper bound 1648, mean uh, 1500, standard deviation of 75. And I end up getting the 1.762. The key thing is we have to include these z-scores. So this right here, all of this has to be my work shown. But once again, if I'm working between something, I'm gonna use the normal CDF. Whereas if I'm working upper bound or lower bound, I'm gonna use the z-test. Okay, so we have one more. What's the probability the light bulb will last between 1416 and, and uh, 1677? Again, because this is a between situation, I'm gonna use the norm CDF, so I think it'll be faster for me. And we have a mean of 1,500. We're looking at 1416 versus 1677. I'm shading in between. All right, and this, because I'm shading in between, that tells me I want to do it this way, and I have a standard deviation of 75. So I'm looking for the probability that 1,416 is less than X is less than 1,677. Z equals X minus mu over sigma. So the probability that Z is less than, start with a larger value, 1677 minus uh, 1,500 over 75 minus the probability that Z is less than 1,416 minus the 1,500 over 75. Now, real quickly, when I look at this, this is below the mean, so I should get a negative z-score here. This is above the mean, so I should get a positive z-score there. All right, so here we go. We gotta calculate those z-scores. So 1677 minus 1500. 1677 minus 1500 divided by 75. So we want the probability that z is less than 2.36. 
probability that Z is less than 2.36 minus the probability that Z is less than, and we go 1416 minus 1500 divided by 75. We end up getting negative 1.12. All right, so there's our Z scores. And once again, that's our, um, our upper and our lower bound. There's our upper bound. And I can use it doing the Z score or I can do the actual values. I'm gonna do both. All right, so second VARs, normal CDF. My lower bound is negative 1.12, negative 1.12. My upper bound is 2.36. Because we're working with a z-score, our mean will be zero, and our standard deviation will be one. And we end up getting a 0.8595 is our probability. That suffices as work shown. All of this. Now, once again, um, I could have done this using actual values, which is probably what I would have done. I probably would have gone second bars, normal CDF and put 1416 as my lower bound, because that's the lower part of my shading, 1677 is the upper part of my shading, 1500, and then 75. All right, so please make sure, regardless how you go about doing it, that you show all of this work. That's what re is required to show uh, to get full credit. I need a probability. I need a, the plug into the Z statement. I need to actually show the Z scores and then I need to give the actual probability. This though right here is likely to get you partial credit, right? Not required, but likely to get you some partial credit if some of this other happens to be um, shown but incorrect for some reason, okay? Hopefully that helps, thank you.